What's up? How are you? Dude. What's up? Dude. Ladies and germs, my next guest needs no intro. Mr. Bobby Tarantino. <laughs> Mr. Logic, hey yo, B Red Jeezy on the ones and twos, coming back for you from the hardcore Malibu. My boy Logic rolling through. Ooh, oh, yo, you know what we should do? I forgot. Let's we see. should do it. We should do a song. I'm, I'm not joking. No, dude. We should do a song called Malibu's Most Blunted, and yeah. then you kind of play that character as a joke. Like it's funny. And yeah. Then, and then we have a smash record, and you get publishing, and it'll be awesome. Dude, I'm, it's so funny you said it because I have a weed. I have a weed. I call Malibu's most blunted. Ooh, I'm trying to sell. Okay, well there you go, bro. That'd be dope. Um, it will be because it's gonna happen as long as you're down. I'm down, but you gotta, you gotta kind of write the guide track and the, some bro, of the, easy. We'll write it together. It'll yeah, the bars. Some of the bars come off good, and other times I have no bars. Well, it's gonna be a blast, and we're gonna have fun. If you're down to do it, you'll come by the studio. We call it the Beat Mansion, Bobby Boy's Mansion. It's where I make all my music these days. Dude, so how are you, man? Thank you for coming. You rolled up. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. How am I? I'm good. I'm blessed. I, my baby's healthy. My wife loves me. I love her. You know, I'm making music every day and, you know, just making moves every day, having fun. So thank you for asking. How old are you? I'm 33. You're 33. You've been making music for at least 13 years. Probably your whole life, boy. Yeah, I've been making music since I was 14. Okay. So almost 20 years. Was that 19 years? Yeah. yeah. 2004. Yeah. So. And where are you from? Uh, originally, I'm from Maryland. You're from Maryland. You're from, I got a lot of peeps down there. Yeah, Silver sure. Springish. Yep. Yeah. That's that's kind of where I came up, not far from there in a, a town called Gaithersburg. And I was, uh, yeah, it's like a suburb of, of D.C. And we call it the DMV, D.C., Maryland, Virginia. Mm-hmm. And I grew up there and that's when I first discovered you. Really? Yeah. Because people don't know. We've never met. Yeah, we have never met. That is weird. We've texted. We've texted. You sent me some nudes, but we never like. Baby, just topless. Oh, yeah, for sure. And you were like, you were like, this is how we met. You said, I got a script. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. You did? (laughs) Well, no, I I forgot that that's how we met. Because usually when I speak with someone, it's very personal like i love it and it was it was personal but i never like i always hate when somebody comes up to you and they go hey what's up can you do this thing for me like i don't like that nobody you know what i mean yeah no so but that this was a little different we were talking i had just reached out to you because it was just because and really then, yeah yeah i was just like hey what's up and then we were talking and we were talking about our love of film and scripts and stuff and then i was like dude i have this movie mm-hmm. and i forgot and i was like oh it's about a homeless comedian <laughs> yo, dude. Yo, you're profiling. No, not at all. That's fucked up, bro. You said homeless. I'm gonna get into that, but you you sent this um, this script. To, to, the thing about you is that people don't realize that you you to me are a person that's just a creative entity, oh, and you're you. known for rap. Mm-hmm. But you can rap. You can sing. You can. Do do different things, write books, novels, yeah, that kind of stuff. Act. You I've can acted. you can compose music. You can act. You want to act. Yeah. You love comedy. I we, love it. This is what we talked about. You like you love. You know more about stand up coat low key than I do. <laughs> you know, I think some people don't get it though. Like like I'll do I'll do podcasts and I'll do certain shit and I'll be like really animated and like funny and they don't realize I'm kind of doing my own Kaufman. Like you know, like it's like I'm, I do like a heightened version of myself. Yeah, which is funny because it's especially when you're playing to like a god, a, you know, an incredible comedian. It's like my that's my goal. Like when I met Chappelle for the first time, mm-hmm. I was like, I gotta make Chappelle laugh, mm-hmm. and I did. Yeah, I just told him a joke about my dad smoking crack or something like that, and then he, he was like, ha ha. <laughs> and you know, you know how you know it's really funny. What? Like if a comedian really thinks it's funny, they go, ha. That's funny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we don't laugh. Like, that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's because you know what we hear all the time. What was your big break mu- song? Because I know you. Mm. It's funny. One eight hundred. Yeah, one eight hundred. That that's a. That's but I a, knew you before that. See, I'm I w- I've been really lucky to have hit albums. Like mm-hmm. I had, I've always been an album artist, and you know when I f- released my first album, Under Pressure in 2014, um, I was broke. You know what I mean? Like, I was just trying to make it. And 
I think a lot of people, you know, Alan Watts said, anything you can be interested in, you'll find others who are. And I just kind of like, I've, I never really have fit in, you know what I mean? Especially being mixed race, but looking completely white and like all this stuff. Like I never, I never really fit in. Um, so I just created kind of my own world, my own planet. Like I'm rapping about fucking anime and sci-fi shit and like all this stuff. Like that's me, Rubik's Cubes and playing chess. Like I've always been, I, that's just who I am and I love it. Um, and I think there's millions, of, no, I know there's millions and millions of people that also feel that same way or maybe feel like they don't fit in or this or that. And my, my motto has always been peace, love, and positivity. And I think that's just another thing that on, on a massive scale, like what wasn't really being represented. And then once I did that, um, boom, first album was a success. The second album was a success and sold really great. The third album beat, you know, Chris Stapleton, like wild, you know what I mean? Yeah. We sold like over a quarter million units in the first week. Da, da, da. And then with that third album, that's when the song, uh, 1-800 came. And once that came out, cause the funny thing is my whole career, I was trying to make hits. Mm -hmm. So I'd be like, I'd have an album and the whole album is like super like, you know, there's a theme to it and a concept. And then there would always be like one or two songs that didn't really fit in because I was trying to make something like pop or trap or make something for the radio. Mm -hmm. And definitely not at the expense of the art, but definitely like I look back and I'm like, man, I wish I just I didn't do that. So with that being said, it's funny that on the third album, I was like, I'm not. I'm not trying, I'm not this, I'm not that. And then the song about suicide <laughs> is the suicide prevention is the one that blows me up. You know, nobody was like, We in the club, this is about to blow up. Like nobody was thinking that. So. Yeah, you're like, dial one eight hundred. Exactly. Pop those bottles, no. Yeah, no. Dude, well, I mean, that's how I always say Stairway to Heaven was mm. made. Wow. Because three it's like, what do they say? You tell me more than I would know, but three fourteen is like it used to be for the song. Three minutes and 14 seconds, you know, eight, 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 chorus, eight. So it's like basically three verse, th three fucking choruses or whatever, and then you're done. It's the radio formula. Yeah. And so when you make something like your, like, 1-800, it was so unique. It was such a, an amazing song, but yet such a deep message and a helpful song. Yeah, I mean, Congress wrote me a letter, dude, and they were like, it is been proven through data and analysis that your song has saved lives around the world you know and i was like whoa that's great that's really that's uh that's an honor that's it's really cool though that that people that's how people would know me they know me for being a mental health advocate they know me for positivity because i mean after that then i just went ham though because i was like oh 1-800 everybody's looking at me and then i just started dropping like trap songs and pop songs and just like yeah. songs with eminem and songs by myself songs with marshmallow the dj yeah like, just going ham and kind of taking advantage of the fact that all these eyes were on me and uh and i'm glad i did so you did, was that song written because of did you feel suicidal? I definitely had my moments. It's funny. I didn't actually feel that way until the song was out and I was performing it everywhere all over the world and people were coming up to me and were like, I tried to kill myself and my brother tried to kill himself and his my, my sister killed herself and da-da-da and just all this pain everywhere I go, people crying and like it was really difficult to deal with um, and that's why I look at the people at the Lifeline, you know, the center and I'm like, man, they, they do this every day. Mm -hmm. I, I, and, and, and it was, it was really difficult, um, to deal with for sure. And I've had those thoughts. Um, I've never been like, I'm going to do this, but, but life has definitely had, uh, has had its, uh, ups and downs for me. But once I learned how to say no, my life was a lot, a lot better. 